Welcome to Cape Ann Art Waves. This program is coming to you by way of 1623 Studios in Gloucester, Massachusetts. I'm Christine Fisher, your host. Every week we have the opportunity to learn from talented artists and makers. And I am so pleased to welcome the highly accomplished, widely revered sculptor turned painter, Ruth Mordecai. Painting for 40 years with a lovely studio located in her home here in Gloucester, Ruth's work is powerful and rooted in symbolism that reflects her story. Ruth has been represented by the Matthew Swift Gallery since 2014. She has a solo exhibition, which is so exciting, coming up very soon, beginning October 10th and running through November 1st at the Matthew Swift Gallery at 189 Main Street in downtown Gloucester. Her artwork is in major public and private collections to include the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, Israel Museum located in Jerusalem, Rose Art Museum, and the Wigan Prints and Drawings Collection of the Boston Public Library. They actually own 35 works collected from 1975 to 2013. <clears throat> Additionally, the Cape Ann Museum has purchased Ruth's work as part of their permanent collection. Ruth is on the board of the Rocky Neck Art Colony and was the director of the Gediman Artist Residency for seven years and is deeply committed to mentoring younger artists. Ruth's book titled Ruth Mordecai, and I have to show you a copy, is in its second printing and can be purchased through the bookstore, through the Matthew Swift Gallery, as well as directly through Ruth. She's gonna talk about the book a little bit later in our, in our interview. Well, welcome, Ruth. It's great to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> I've been one of your many champions, as you know. Uh, I am going to mention a quote that I think will kick things off. <clears throat> I think my strength, strength is that I come to painting from a place of sculpture. Let's use that as a jumping off point to discuss your journey. We also have a lovely image that you're going to speak to as well. Well, I thought that I would be a sculptor forever. I loved working from the figure and I had that, you know, traditional European kind of education at Boston University School for the Arts um, for uh, actually probably seven years. And I, um, uh, it, it, what happened was as I became influenced by seeing the work of Matisse and Marini and their journey from the figure to abstraction to a more minimal kind of expression, I kind of began to follow that. And so I, uh, I gradually left the figure, moved into clay slab, moved into welding, and the welding became a line. Um, it all revolved around gesture, mm -hmm. finding the the simplest gesture, the strongest gesture within the form, and it kind of took me away from sculpture and into drawing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The piece that's up um, is the, the um, that is the final piece from the series in 2018, which is called The Missing Letter. And it was a very complex a series of images and symbols, which became, simplified into this piece that you see on the screen. So mm -hmm. I'm always happy when the, when the complexity gets reduced to what I feel is the most important point. Right, is the essence of it. I think that's one of the reasons why I've always been so drawn to your paintings, because I do feel that, that uh, structure, I do feel that sculptural, you know, in, in, in the bones of the painting, if you will. Let's transition and talk about, you touched on it briefly, but let's talk more about your influences and your inspirations. Well, um, uh, the influences, the, the, the in historical influences I mentioned, um, and, um, um, I think uh, moving from sculpture, a lot happened when I was commissioned to do an arc for the synagogue in Beverly, Temple B'nai Abraham. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, I needed to incorporate symbols into that arc and I knew nothing about creating an arc. An arc is a kind of worthy frame for 
for the Torahs in the, mm -hmm. in, at the front of the synagogue. And, um, and so I had to do research into those symbols and, and into symbols. And that was when I came up with things like doves and menorahs and the number seven and, and kinds of colors, purple and gold and whatever for different reasons that became part of that arc. And that was kind of the beginning of incorporating symbols because that arc, then, then I started to paint mm -hmm. based on some of those symbols they that's found their way into my studio work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I'll just do the arc and that'll be done. But that's not what happened. It, you know, it became a part of my uh, language. Exactly. I, I think of your symbols as very much your language. And you quoted to me earlier when we talked, symbols are like containers. I never know from a story or a dream. <laughs> Let's talk more about that. <laughs> well, stories, sto um, I did do a, a container series mm -hmm. where I created like a container that held it felt like it was a, a, a story of my life that all these symbols were in the container. <laughs> um, and uh, um, I have recently, this the show in 2020 came from a dream, which I'll, I can talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, story, um, that first image, and it's in the second one also, mm -hmm. is this missing letter. And, and that came from uh, reading. It's from uh, a book by Lawrence Kushner, who's a rabbi who's now in San Francisco. But um, that, the, the symbol always means to me more than just the form of the symbol. Oh, of course, and, yeah. And this was, um, his quote was, it will create undreamed of worlds, transforming repression into loving. This is what, when that, when that missing letter appears mm. because it's mystical it's mm -hmm. kind of like the coming of the messiah mm -hmm. it's a mystical letter and when it appears there will be peace and there will be love and i you know i felt like we needed that right now i, was gonna I say, felt like oh give me more of that so they can't come too quickly ruth <laughs> no, no and so the, the, it's in the first one it's in the background of the second piece and the second piece the symbols you know, this um, ancient sun, tree of life, um, goddess figure, you know, they all have sort of, they've come and gone in my work over time. Um, the dream question that you asked me, um, Andy Matlow is an artist in Gloucester and a few of us have been doing, he's a very um, adept at doing dream work. Mm -hmm. And so some of us have been working with him. And so this dream that this work in 2020 came out of was, was it in a dream that I, you know, spoke to about him and we had a conversation about it. So um, the, the last three pieces are called the sign. Uh-huh. So I'm going to hold you right there because we want to talk a little bit about your process. And then I, I want to dive into the exhibition because I'd love for you to share more and use these three images uh, as wonderful examples of the work that we're going to see in uh, your show. Uh, Ruth, what's that? Yeah, process. Process. Um, Talk to me about process. Yeah, well, so I start off, I, I, I start off on pay, I usually work on paper. Mm -hmm. because I can cut it up, because I can collage it, and because since I've left being a sculptor, collage is for me the uh, the closest thing to sculpture that I can do, you know, on a two-dimensional surface. Right. And, um, uh, so I uh, gesso paper, I work with black and white acrylic, and I move the black and white around until I find how I want to create, how I want to design the space. Then I go in with oil paint, collage, other materials. Mm -hmm. and, well, I, good, good. please, did you want to add to that? <laughs> I don't think so. I think, yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I've mentioned to you before that I really appreciate about how you share your work is the storyboard that I certainly have seen it in your gallery here in Gloucester. 
as I've also seen it at one of your former shows at the Matthew Swift Gallery, where you really break down the steps, kind of the various iterations of a particular painting to get to that essence, to get to that simplification, you know, as you call it. Well, well I've been taking pictures as I yes. go. Yes. Of these larger pieces where I know they're gonna be going on for a while before right. I can resolve them. Yes. So I might have 10 or 12 photographs of them in process. Yeah, they're very, very interesting. I think they're very revealing. Uh, I want to ask you, how many pieces do you work on at once, Ruth? Do you work on one single piece or is it many or a, a few? A few. Uh -huh. I'm doing small pieces while I'm doing a big one. Okay. You know, because there are, there are 10 or 11 pieces in this show that are 12 by 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And then there are eight or nine that are large. So while I'm working on a large piece where I can't resolve it, I might do some smaller pieces that are a takeoff from it where at least I know, well, I can resolve that. Yes, yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. And I bet one informs the other, you know, through that process. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, which makes so much sense. So yeah. this is a perfect segue. You've paved the way. We've got three images that we'd like to talk to uh, regarding the exhibition that you have coming up at Matthew Swift uh, Gallery, the Matthew Swift Gallery here in downtown Gloucester. And again, I'm going to reiterate the dates. It opens October 2nd and it goes through November 1st. So talk to us about that exhibition. Uh, oh, opens October 10th. 10th. October 10th. October 10th. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is tomorrow. But we, don't, we don't know when this will be coming That's out. That's right. No, this will be a little yeah. later. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, the large uh, horizontal that's uh, black and white has some some red in it or rust color. Um, uh, that's a combination of all of, of so many images, so many symbols of uh, uh, the the missing letter and and. Um, uh, the ancient sun and something to do with the goddess in the middle, maybe, but I didn't know what was going to be happening with it. I didn't yeah. have that intention when I started it. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of collage pieces. It's, it's, I've taken from old, old work that I've cut up. You know, I save old work that I like a part of it, but I don't like the whole thing. So I have sure. a whole pile of things like that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly all these pieces started to make sense together. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, uh, but that was very complex. And the next piece, which has the um, uh, goddess figure and on the right, the tree of life is 12 by 12 inches. Mm -hmm. and was a takeoff from that piece where I started to get clearer on simplifying it. Mm -hmm. The last piece, which is the 40, by, 40 inches by 60 inches wide, um, has many layers of black and white, and I just kept it up there and just kept simplifying it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm actually very pleased. I, I'm very pleased with that last piece. Um, mm -hmm. Um, it feels that there's just enough information, but not too much. Right, right, right. Well, I can't wait to see your exhibition. It's yeah. going to be marvelous. <laughs> and it's exciting to have a live exhibition too, right? Yes, yes. There'll be, <laughs> there'll, be, um, there'll be COVID restrictions so people don't have to worry. There'll be only you know, a few people in the gallery at a time. Right. And I'll mostly meet people outside. They yes. Can look at and I'll meet them outside. Yes, how wonderful that you've had such a long-standing relationship with Matthew. Do you have any tips for those artists that might like to be represented by a dealer? Oh, that's a tough one. You know, I met Matthew, we started talking when he first came here and opened the gallery, when he first opened the gallery. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, uh, I, and I don't know what to advise other I think you have to look and see who is doing work that relates to what you do yes I think you really have to go out and look and then those are the people you approach right and so much of it is based on trust and rapport right yes Matthew he's been a wonderful uh, gallerist for you 
Yes. And um, I'm, yes. I'm very, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'd like to talk about your book. Oh, the book. <laughs> this book, I'm going to hold it up again. It is such a wonderful treasure. <laughs> Here we are, Ruth Mordecai. And I'm sorry for the glare of my lights that are above me. Um, but talk to us, Ruth. Your book has been out for a little bit. You're now into your second printing, which is terrific. Talk to us about why you did it, because you've got a very rich story. And also, if you have any tips. I'm a, a big one for asking our artists for advice that they might share with other artists. Well, the, I mean, the, the first thing is I wanted to tell my story and I wanted to tell it to my children and my grandchildren mm -hmm. and the people who own my work, mm -hmm. the collections that I'm in. The second thing is that I wanted other artists to know that they didn't have to have a book produced by Rizzoli because they had a show at the Museum of Modern Art that they could mm -hmm. make a decision to make their own book in their own way. And that anybody who wants to know how I did it or information about it, I'd be delighted to talk to you about it and, mm -hmm. and talk to you about my process in doing it. Um, the other thing was that um, this is a time of, uh, of so much anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim, anti-people of color, anti-Mexican. Mm -hmm. I just, I felt that the Jewish part of my story was an important one to tell. So it's not that that's all the work is, that's mm -hmm. part of the work, it's part of who I am. You know, yes. we're all made up of lots of parts and that's one of the important parts of me. And I wanted, especially at this time, to express that. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, I, and so there's a, a, a section written by Ori Soltis, who's from Georgetown, um, who's a, a, a Jewish scholar, and he write has he writes one of the statements in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, the other statement is Judith Tolnik Champa, who was the uh, editor of uh, Art New England for a while. So. Um, I was very uh, pleased that they wrote in the book. Well, you know, I, I always have felt, and I've said this to you before, but I have felt that your paintings reveal a certain amount of wisdom. I mean, they really impact that for me. So um, I want to thank you for that. <laughs> Ruth, it's been such a pleasure. I'll hold that. I'll hold that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Real pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing so much thank of yourself. You, I'm, yeah. I'm just thrilled that you wanted to do it. So oh, you. I'm thrilled yeah. too. I'm thrilled that the timing has worked out so well. Um, and I want to say to our listeners, for those of you that would like to check out more of Ruth's work, please go to her website, which is ruthmordecai.com. Also, check out Matthew Swift Gallery's website as well. In closing, I want to say that this recording can be accessed on 1623 Studio social media platform to include Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Channel 12. So again, I'm Christine Fisher. Thank you, Ruth Mordecai. What a treat. See you next time. Thank you.